Well, you see on the screen are seven individual atoms. Atoms are the building blocks of matter. But in my lab, atoms are the building blocks for a quantum computer. So we use the quantum states of these atoms in order to store and process information. Why do we do this? Well, the computers, even the supercomputers that we have today, cannot do every task that we throw at them. Here is an example from chemistry. What you see is that as the size of problem increases, the time taken on a supercomputer increases exponentially, and it rapidly hits the age of the universe. <laughs> the prediction is that for a quantum computer, the scaling is very different, and it maintains its ability to compute this type of problem. Now, these sort of problems don't just exist in physics and chemistry. In fact, one of the first quantum algorithms was found for finding the prime factors of very large numbers. And that's important because that means that a quantum computer would break RSA cryptography, which is a gold standard and in widespread use today. And while these problems may seem niche, it's worth bearing in mind that cryptography and physics were exactly the areas that were being thought about by the fathers of the modern computer, with no anticipation of the major developments that were to follow. So how do we build a quantum computer? Well, we start from individual atoms, and we start from the quantum states of individual atoms. And those we think of in the following way. We take uh, the surface of a sphere, and each quantum state is a point on the surface of the sphere. And we denote up as being 0, down as 1, and quantum states can be anywhere in between. In the laboratory, when we shine a laser pulse, what we do is to rotate this quantum state about the center of the sphere. But for a computer, we don't just need these individual elements. We also need to connect them together logically. And so how do we do that? Well, there we use the fact that our atoms are charged. And that means that they push on each other, they repel each other like balls on the end of a spring. If I move one, the other one also moves. And this gives a physical connection and allows us to start to put together circuits. And here, the circuit that you see was one that we used to demonstrate any logic on two atoms. But two atoms is pretty far from competing with a supercomputer. So we think we'll need around a million atoms in order to do that. And that's very far from the level of six or seven, which are in the leading laboratories today. And the thing we're thinking about there is scaling up. And the question you ask is how, what do we need in order to scale up? And a principal element is you need to be able to communicate. You need to be able to take information from one side of your processor to somewhere on the other side. And so one of the things we had to put in was the ability to transport our atoms around this larger device. And indeed, that's what we do. We push them with electric forces. With this in hand, then we had the ingredients for scaling up. We can transport and we can do all other operations, that gives us a unit which has all the elements we require for scalability and can be dropped in as part of a larger array to make a computer. What remains is to fabricate complex structures that can actually implement this computer, and advances are being made there too. In red, I've highlighted the regions where the atoms can be transported on this chip, and all the other things you see are connections for control signals. And the beauty of this chip is that it was built using methods that are similar to the methods that are used to make the chips in your laptop. So there we hope to stand on the top of the electronics industry, which makes highly complex and well-developed devices in order to build quantum computers. So where we stand today, we think there is no fundamental barrier to building a quantum computer, but what is nevertheless required is innovation, technological innovation, physics innovation, in order to take us the optimal path to that goal. Thanks for your attention.